Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm coming at you with another paid request, this time from Zach Hall, who wanted me to review Saving Private Ryan, which is a great movie. It is a classic movie. Um, I do really enjoy it, but I wouldn't put it in my top 10 World War II movies. I would not. I'm sure that's controversial to some people, but, you know, there's other World War II films that I like more. Uh, Dirty Dozen, The Great Escape, Where Eagles Dare with Clint Eastwood, Kelly's Heroes, another World War II Clint Eastwood movie I enjoy more. Um, but Saving Private Ryan is a classic. It is one of the greatest war films ever made. Um, I just wouldn't put it in my top ten. That's just me. But oh well. But before I go any further, if anyone would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request such as this, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It doesn't have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon or a comic book or a video game. Music, random thoughts and rants and streams and commentaries and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if that's something that you are interested in, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. And for those that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos you want to see, and I keep making them. And as they used to say at Blockbuster, everybody goes home happy. So there you go. But Saving Private Ryan. How do you, again, like many other movies and, and topics and TV shows and, and such that I have covered here on the channel, how can you really do a review of a movie such as this that's such a, you know, extremely popular film, a well-known film considered one of the greatest movies ever made? Um, I mean, I, I guess the movie could get that. I wouldn't really, you know, if, if I was to do a list of the 100 greatest movies ever made, um, I don't think I would include Saving Private Ryan, at least in my opinion. Um, if, if we were talking war films or specifically world war ii movies yeah i would include that you know among the greatest but at, out of all time 100 greatest movies i don't know maybe maybe not it is debatable but again how do you review a film such as this you know that that's just been talked about ad nauseum and you know, over the years. But honestly, I think in more recent years, this movie's kind of died down a little bit because I don't really hear people bring it up as much. I mean, honestly, <laughs> not really any World War II films get brought up that much anymore, you know, in, in the in the mainstream. Um, you know, in the mainstream, I haven't, haven't heard of this film mentioned in quite a while. Again, I mean, any World War II movie, I haven't really heard mentioned. In, in a number of years, to be honest, but, oh well. So, I mean, I'm not going to go too much into the plot on this film, but for the sake of argument, the story is uh, Tom Hanks's character and his squad of Army Rangers, they are tasked with bringing uh, Private Ryan, you know, Private James Ryan, who's played by Matt Damon, home from World War II, because he had three brothers that were killed and there is a rule there is a law that you know if you are the last of the bloodline if you're the last son and you're in combat you, they take you out because you're it so that is actually a real thing um in the military still um, i don't think it's as common as it used to be but in world war ii and, and maybe even vietnam it was pretty common so they have to go and get him and and survive the battles that they have to endure and that's pretty much it i mean it's a pretty simple plot you know it's a pretty simplistic idea and it's not a hundred percent based on a true story it's inspired because the writer of the film robert wrote it i think is his name yeah robert wrote at. okay i was close robert wrote at, uh read a book 
And in the book, they talked about that. There was, you know, uh, these brothers. It was four brothers in World War II. Two of them got killed. The third one they thought got killed, but he didn't. And then the fourth one they got, they got out in time. Um, I think the two that survived have since passed away, but that, you know, inspired him to write this movie. And Steven Spielberg got involved because he was starting DreamWorks at the time. I think this was one of the first uh, Dream... dream <laughs> can't talk. One of the first DreamWorks movies that came out. Not the first. I believe Peacemaker was the first, which I actually like that. I have that over here on uh, on Blu-ray. But I actually like The Peacemaker with George Clooney. I think that's a pretty underrated movie. And Steven Spielberg had always wanted to do a straight-up World War II film because he did, a couple years prior to this, he did Schindler's List, which was about the Holocaust. And, of course, the Indiana Jones movies dealt with World War II and the Nazis. And, and Steven Spielberg had just always wanted to do a World War II movie, and this is the one that ended up becoming the movie that he wanted to do. Um, and Tom Hanks got involved. They wanted... They actually wanted Mel Gibson and Harrison Ford in the lead, which I could see either actor. I could definitely see Harrison Ford or Mel Gibson in that role. It would have been a different kind of movie, but I think it would have worked. But ultimately, it went to Tom Hanks because him and Steven Spielberg had wanted to work together, and they both had a passion and you know so much knowledge about World War II that it just kind of seemed like a match made in heaven, which I do agree. I think that this is one of Tom Hanks' best performances. He should have won the Oscar that year. I know that Saving Private Ryan was heavily favored to win the Oscars that year, and I I think it only won it won Best Director, as it clearly says here on the front of the Blu-ray. But it didn't win. Uh, it did not win Best Picture, which was a huge upset, and then Tom Hanks did not win Best Actor, which I believe was a huge upset as well. Um, I do remember hearing a little bit about that growing up. Like, oh my god, Saving Private Ryan didn't win Best Picture. Fucking Shakespeare in Love did. Okay, well, I've never seen Shakespeare in Love, so yeah. But we all know that the Oscars is a bunch of bullshit anyway, so there you go. But Tom Hanks definitely should have won the Oscar for Best Actor. He should have got his third Oscar for this. And the movie should have definitely won Best Picture, at least in my opinion. Even though you guys know how very critical I am of the Oscars, because fuck the Oscars. But in all fairness, this movie should have won Best Picture and Best Actor. Just like in 1990, it was a big deal when Goodfellas didn't win the Best Picture and Dances with Wolves did. I get why Dances with Wolves won it, but in my opinion, it should have been uh, good fellas. So there you go. But anyway, we could sit here and, and debate that all day, but let's get back to the movie. So it was kind of a match made in heaven. I agree. You know, again, I think this is one of Tom Hanks's best performances. I do think that this is one of Spielberg's best movies. I wouldn't say it's his best film. In my opinion, that will always be Jaws. I think Jaws will just, you know, I will argue that to the, to the chickens and the crows and the cows and whatever, you know, the earthworms come home. I think that Jaws is still Steven Spielberg's best film. And in more recently, you know, I know we talked about it on a live stream. I said, you know what? Jaws is my favorite. And for years and years, it was Jurassic Park. And I still love Jurassic Park. But the more that I think about it, I like Jaws more. So Jaws is definitely my favorite Spielberg movie. And I believe, in my opinion, it's his best film. But this is one of his best films, without a doubt. And when after this movie came out, number one, it reignited people's interest in World War II, and I do remember this as a kid because after this movie came out, specifically because of the D-Day scene, which we'll get more in depth here momentarily. Everyone was obsessed with World War II again. Um, I remember in school because at the time this came out, this was ninety-eight, so I was in the first grade when this movie came out, but I remember. Like second, third, and fourth, and even fifth grade, everybody, all my all my buddies, myself included, everybody wanted to know about World War II. Everybody was exploring, you know, books, and this is when the internet started to get really big, and everybody wanted every single bit of information about World War II that was out there. I remember in school, 
doing projects on Winston Churchill. I remember doing a project on Pearl Harbor. Um, I actually, the Pearl Harbor, like I made a poster. I have that poster up in the, I think it's in the attic somewhere. I still have that poster that I made. Um, everybody was obsessed with World War II, myself included. I wanted to learn as much as I could about World War II because this movie was a big catalyst for that. Also, the year after this movie came out, 1999, well, this was 98, right? Yeah, duh, I'm, eh, I just said it. 1999, the first Medal of Honor video game came out, which I am still obsessed with. And that also really drew my interest in World War II. Steven Spielberg produced that game. Uh, captain Dale Dye, Marine Corps captain. Not only was he the technical advisor on this movie and has a cameo, he was the technical advisor on that video game. And then, of course, after this movie came out, Pearl Harbor came out a couple years later. Lousy movie. Wind Talkers came out, which I like. Uh, the Great Raid was a couple years later. I heard it's not that good of a movie. Um, so after this, every other movie that was coming out had something to do with World War II. Hollywood was obsessed with it. The general public was obsessed with it. And that's just the power that Steven Spielberg's movies had back then. Not so much now. I don't want to get into West Side Story. But back when Steven Spielberg was the top dog in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and into the 2000s, because this, honestly, this is kind of the end of Spielberg's run, because, I mean, what really significant movie did he do after this? Lincoln? But that was like 2012, you know? So this was kind of the end of Spielberg being the, the top dog in Hollywood. But that's the effect that his movies had back then, was when he did a movie, people became interested in that subject. When Schindler's List came out, a lot of awareness and a lot of people wanted to know more about the Holocaust. So there you go. Jurassic Park. Everybody was obsessed with dinosaurs, myself included. Um, you know, that's just what Spielberg did back then with his films. Um, and not just him, but many other directors, and we don't have that anymore unfortunately. So this movie blew up really big. It was the highest grossing movie in the world in 1998. It was not the highest grossing movie in America. Armageddon was. But this was the highest grossing movie. Actually, no, 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 no. Correction. Flip-flop. Armageddon was the highest grossing movie in the world in 98. This was the highest grossing movie in America in 98. I'm sorry. I had them mixed up. Um, yeah, it was a huge financial success when it came out. I remember the video because my parents, I don't know if I might still have it in the closet over there. I'm not entirely sure, but I remember my parents had the VHS of it and I always wanted to watch it. And I had to kind of like sneak around and watch it because I mean, it is, it is graphic. It is violent, but you know what? That really happened. The way the, the. The, the violence of D-Day, that is what happened. That was real, okay? The violence of the other combat scenes is what really happened. That's what happens in war. People kill each other. There's blood and guts and people losing limbs and people blowing up and their guts hanging out. That is reality. So, yeah. But it's pretty accurate, you know, to the, the combat stuff is pretty accurate. Um, we'll get into some of that in, in, a, in a moment here, but... You know, I remember, yeah, the VHS and also the DVD, because this was one of the first big DVDs to come out in, uh, in, in the DVD world. That and The Matrix, to be honest. And they came out, I think, around the same time. But the VHS was huge back in the day. I, I was reading earlier that this movie made, like, $44 million on VHS. And, and you have to remember, this was 99, so VHS was cheaper. So a lot of people bought this movie on VHS. Again, I don't know if I still have it on VHS. I might have got rid of it when I got it on DVD. And then, of course, upgraded to the Blu-ray. But uh, And we'll talk about this in a second, because there's a, not this one, but there's a problem with this Blu-ray. Um, not my copy. My copy's good. But, yeah, I mean, everywhere you went, that tape was, people were just buying that tape like it was going out of stock. And even now, like, when I go to, like, thrift stores and, and places like that, you can find plenty of copies of Saving Private. Like, again, people, 
if people would have bought stock in the VHS, they would have, you know, been millionaires overnight. But, I mean, this movie was everywhere. This was a hugely popular movie. And it was very influential because, you know, this was one of the first movies to have shaky cam. Now, in the combat scenes, I like it because that makes it more realistic. And, you know, when bombs are going off and you're getting shot at, yeah, like it's you're not normal. Um, but when like there's a lot of shots in the movie where they're just like sitting there and they're moving the camera. The one scene that really bothers me when they're looking through the dog tags, they're shaking the camera around and I'm like, that's unnecessary. But in the combat scenes, it makes sense. So this is one of, you can blame shaky cam on Steven Spielberg and saving private Ryan, even though, like I said, in the combat scenes, it's appropriate. Uh, the color of this movie is really desaturated. I do like it, but it's not the first movie to do that. A lot of people have said that Saving Private Ryan was the first movie to wash out the colors and make it look as dark as possible. That This is not the first movie. The Crow actually did it a couple of years before this, but never got the credit for it. Because if you watch The Crow, particularly on the DVD, the Blu-ray they tweaked it a little bit. That's the one complaint I have with the Blu-ray of The Crow is they kind of brightened the movie up and it's not supposed to look like that. On the DVD, which I still have because there's the features didn't all move to the DVD. And then the commentary is different on the DVD. But anyway, that's another video for another day. But if you watch the DVD or the VHS or the laser disc of The Crow, the color timing is correct and everything looks washed out and it looks bleak and that's how it's supposed to. Saving Private Ryan was not the first movie to do that. Again, a lot of people bring that up and it's not. And it's not every single scene because there's a lot, like in the the part of the movie when, spoiler alert if you've never seen it, when Giovanni Ribisi gets killed, the medic, and they're out like in the countryside and they don't know what to do with the German that is all natural lighting. I don't think they use any movie lights for that because the sun, the way that the sun looks and everything. So not every single scene of the movie has that desaturated color, but a lot of it does. Again, particularly the combat scenes. So there you go. And then a lot of the like the angles and the shots that they use, that was the first time that this movie did that. And again, a lot of the combat scenes, it's handheld. It's not a camera on dolly and they're just moving. No, it's actually handheld shots. And it looks good because that's more realistic. So I do give the movie respect there. But for people to say that it was the first movie to have the, the colors all washed out, no. Again, watch The Crow. Uh, the Crow was actually one of the first ones to do that with the de desaturizing the film print and everything because that's the way that they wanted it to look. I mean, Brand there's an interview, you can find it on YouTube. Brandon Lee said he wanted to shoot the movie in black and white, but the studio said no, and I agree. I think that there is versions out there of The Crow. There's like fan edits where it's black and white, and I do recommend it if you can find it. But the cast, let me talk about that for a minute. The cast is great. Again, Tom Hanks, I think it's one of his best performances. You know, he really wanted to do the movie, and I think he was the right choice. Again, Harrison Ford and Mel Gibson, I think, would have done great, but it would have been a different kind of film. Um, and there's a shit ton of people in this movie. Sometimes I forget how many people are in this. Again, Tom Hanks, Giovanni Ribisi, Vin Diesel. This was one of Vin Diesel's first movies. Uh, Tom Sizemore, who was actually uh, trying to get sober at the time, and he had it in his contract where he had to get drug tested every day, and if he failed, he got fired. And he did not, and he's in the movie, and I think he's great in the movie. Um, Adam Goldberg from Days and Confused, he's the Jewish guy, Mellish. I think he's great in the movie. Jeremy Davies is in the film. He's the coward, but great character. I mean, great actor. Uh, Dennis Farina's in the film, Dale Dye's in the film, Brian Cranston, way be you know, a couple years before Malcolm in the Middle, Brian Cranston's in the movie, uh, Paul Giamatti's in the film, he has a small role, Nathan Fillion is in the movie, he is the, he's Private Ryan, but he's not the one they're looking for, he's the other guy, Ted Danson's in the film, Ted Danson's his superior in the movie, there's just some, uh, Leland Orser, who was in 
Taken. He was in the Taken movies. He was in, unfortunately, Alien Resurrection. Uh, he's in the film. There's just so many people in this movie. It's crazy um, how many actors, big actors, are in this movie. But I guess everybody wanted to be in it, and I don't blame them. But there is a phenomenal... Uh, Barry Pepper, he's the sniper. How could I forget? One of my favorite characters. Uh, Barry Pepper is the sniper in the film. Jackson. Um, Edward Burns. What the hell happened to Edward Burns, man? Like, I always liked him as an actor. And for a while there, it looked like he was going to be the next big guy. But it never happened. I think A Sound of Thunder kind of fucked that up because it's such a terrible movie. But... I I don't even remember the last movie that Edward Burns was in. Like, what is he doing? I liked I always liked him as an actor, and he's one of the characters that actually lives in the movie. Spoiler alert. But yeah, where is Edward Burns? Like, did he retire, or is he doing like little indie movies? Like, I don't even know. Again, what the last film that he was in, you know? But I always liked him as an actor. I like his work. But so many great people in this film. Um. You know, the D-Day scene is pretty accurate. I know when the movie came out, there was a lot of D-Day veterans that said, yep, that's that's what happened. You know, that's pretty much what happened. Um, you know, it's pretty brutal. Even now, 20-some years later, it's still a pretty brutal scene to sit through. Now, look, I was in the military. I never saw combat, thank God. But it is uncomfortable. It is, you know, definitely something that people shouldn't have to go through and people, you know, whatever. But the cool thing is, though, they filmed that in Ireland. So they didn't actually film at Normandy because because you can't because of it's protected like land and you can't film movies and stuff there. Um, but, the well, the beach part, because I think that the, the graveyard scene, I think that was actually filmed there. So you can film that, but you can't go on the beach and stuff because it's historical and, and it's not supposed to be touched. I don't agree. I don't disagree. I should say, I'm sorry. I don't disagree with that. But I think the graveyard scenes were filmed there, if I'm not mistaken. But they did use, since they filmed it in Ireland, they used the Irish military. They actually used uh, those guys. And then a lot of reenactors, a lot of the people, like either German or American, they're reenactors. Even later stuff in the film, like the final battle at the end, a lot of those people were just World War II reenactors that wanted to be in the movie. So that's really cool. Um, and they use real amputees, like when the guy picks his arm up, that was a real amputee that they used. Um, you know, it it's a great scene. I mean, it is. It's brutal. It's nasty. But that's what really happened. I mean. I know when the movie came out, like, Oliver Stone got butt hurt. What a surprise. Because, you know, oh, it's too violent and it's too brutal. Well, you know, again, Oliver Stone's a Vietnam veteran. I'm sure he saw some pretty brutal, violent things when he was in Vietnam. So, yeah. And I know over the years, you know, people still love the film. But a lot of people kind of shit on it and it's not accurate. Well, no shit, it's not accurate. It's a movie. I don't care, you know, even if the D-Day scene wasn't in there, at the end of the day, it's still a film. It's make-believe. They're going to do what they want to do. And even, I saw one person was like, well, even Tom Hanks knew that it wasn't accurate. Well, no shit, because number one, they paid him a shit ton of money to be in the movie. And number two, he wanted to do the movie. So there you go. But it just, it gets me, you know, again, like I said, I am I was in the military. But I know the difference between real life and a movie. Most of the movies that come out that deal with the military is not accurate. I know that. It's a movie. It's make-believe. I don't get butthurt about it. I like Rambo because Rambo is fun and it's entertaining. I know in real life that shit wouldn't work. It's a fucking movie. But people just can't let it go. Anyway. Um, and speaking, because I said earlier this movie was one of the first big DVDs, it was actually also one of the last big laser discs to come out. I don't have it on laser disc. I definitely want to get it. But this was one of the last, like, really big movies that come out on laser disc. So I definitely would love to get that and crank it up and hear how great it sounds. Um, and then I think I kind of hit the high points, you know. You know, again, the combat scenes, again, it's pretty brutal. It's pretty realistic. You know, again, war is not friendly. Again, I've never been there. I don't, I don't recommend it for people, but it's pretty brutal. 
You know, that's people are killing each other. So yeah, it's it's gonna be brutal. But they I remember I do remember like ABC would show this on Veterans Day a couple of times, but people made such a big deal about it that they never showed it again. Because they showed it uncut, like completely uncut. All the blood and the guts and the language completely uncut and they got fined by the FCC and all these parent groups were mad and everything. But all these veteran groups were like, no, that's reality. Like, this is what really happened. Okay? So, yeah. Um, get over it. But I know when they show it, like, TNT used to show it a lot. I remember catching it on there a couple. I think TNT showed it uncut. But I guess because it's cable, it was okay. But, oh, well. But this Blu-ray, this is the original Blu-ray. Uh, I think there's a 4K out there, but I don't think it has any new features. Um, when this Blu-ray came out, the audio was fucked up, like the sync. But this is the corrected version. I watched it, and I think because it has the yellow barcode. Because I know a lot of times when they fix them and they re-release them, the barcode will be yellow. Because the one, uh, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the special edition... When that first came out on Blu-ray, that was screwed up, but they fixed it, and then they made the barcode yellow. So I think this is the correct version, because again, I watched it, there's no issues, the movie looks great, I mean, it looks awesome in high definition, I played it on the big TV upstairs, it sounds great too, um, but uh, I don't know, again, I don't, I don't think that the 4K has new features, I'd have to look into that, but... Yeah, that's just a, a little word of advice for those that want to track this one down. Uh, make sure you get the one with the yellow barcode, because that's the correct version, not the fucked up version. And here's what gets me. Like, I was reading this earlier, and it says, Rated R, for intense, prolonged, realistically graphic sequences of war violence. Okay, cool. Why can't you just say graphic war violence? Why do you have to make a tongue twister And for language? But yeah, oh well. But at the end of the day, you know, Saving Private Ryan, it's a great movie. It's a classic. I don't watch it all the time because, number one, it's almost three hours. <laughs> and number two, I would not put this among my favorite World War II movies. Like I said at the, at the beginning of the video, I like Kelly's Heroes and Where Eagles Dare and Great Escape and Dirty Dozen more than this. I mean, even uh, one of a big, yeah, even Big Red One, I would, I like Big Red One more with uh lee marvin you know more than saving private ryan i'm trying to think if there's any others well he, fuck i'll say it i like wind talkers more than this i mean it's john woo so yeah i know people are gonna you know want to burn me at the stake for that but i like wind talker i would put wind talkers in my top 10 wind talkers is very underrated but there's other world war ii movies that i like but again at the end of the day it is a great movie it's a classic. It's one of the greatest war movies ever made. It's one of the greatest World War II films ever made. Um, you know, this was a hugely successful, popular, influential movie. I just don't know why now people don't talk about it anymore. Uh, but a lot of movies go through that. But it's great. I absolutely love Saving Private Ryan. And I, I'll end with this. I completely forgot about the part when they're talking to the guy and the grenade went off by his ear so he couldn't hear. And he's like, what? Huh? And I completely forgot that part was in the movie, and I, of course, chuckled at that. But good stuff nonetheless. So if you've never seen this, you need to do yourself a favor and watch it. If you haven't seen it in a while, it's always a good one to watch. But yeah. So thank you, Zach, for sending in the paid request. I believe he said it's his favorite movie of all time. That's awesome. You know, good stuff. You know, it is a good one to pick. I'm not going to lie. And uh, stay tuned because I will be getting into some more paid requests. So until then, guys, as always, thank you for watching once again. Take care, and we'll talk soon. See you.